On Lan Syed, the Baltimore man found guilty of murdering his ex-girlfriend as a teenager over 20 years ago had his conviction overturned in a watershed moment for the case that's captivated tens of millions of listeners of the serial true crime podcast since 2014. Syed, who is now 41 years old, returned home last night for the first time since 1999. A Baltimore judge vacated his first-degree murder charge in the interest of justice and fairness, ruling that the original trial's prosecutors failed to properly disclose evidence that pointed to alternative suspects. Mm. Syed's supporters say his life conviction was based on mostly circumstantial evidence that included coerced witness testimony and debunked cell phone tower data. The victim, Heyman Lee, was 18 years old when she was strangled to death. Yesterday, her brother said he feels betrayed by the prosecutor's motion to vacate Syed's conviction, but is open to a hearing is open to hearing details of a renewed investigation into the killer. Joining us now to break down the case for us is News Nation correspondent Kelsey Kernstein. Kelsey, welcome to Rising. Good morning, guys. Yeah, I mean the prosecutors will have the next 30 days to either drop the case or go ahead and push for uh, new murder charges against uh, Adnan Syed. Uh, Syed, um, but still a lot of questions remain in the case. We know that there was kind of unreliable witness testimony as well as unreliable data from that cell phone. Uh, still kind of pending in the case is DNA data. Right. The, the DNA data never, uh, never, you know, definitively demonstrated anything regarding his guilt. Yes. I know there were a lot of previous, uh, you know, motions filed by his defense, kind of hinging on the idea that maybe he did not get the best defense possible from uh, the woman who represented him, Christina Gutierrez, who I believe is now deceased and I, I think was disbarred or something of that nature uh, before her death. Uh, is that part of, of the details here, a kind of concession that, yeah, you know, he really did not get he did not get fair due process because he was not represented competently? Not necessarily. That's what they're saying. What they're saying is when they dug into his case now, 20 years later, they found new new notes within the case showing um possible to two little notes saying, oh, there's two other alternative suspects in the case, and it was never released to the defense. So this is kind of saying either the authorities or prosecutors in the case back in 1999, they didn't release information to the defense attorney. And without that information, how are they supposed to know what to do? Yeah, so I was wondering if you could remind us a little bit, because like a lot of folks, I watched or listened rather to Serial back in 2014 or 2015 when it came out. And I do have a vague recollection of the suspense of the podcast largely relating to all of these instances that could potentially be exculpatory, less so that the, case, the podcast was making the case that he was innocent, but that the government hadn't really proved his case. Could you, uh, you know, remind us a little bit of, of the story there and why it was so compelling to folks in the first instance. Yeah, so this this happened back in 1999, and um, Heyman Lee, she was found dead, buried in a Baltimore park, and um, and authorities uh, they they believed or the, the prosecutors believed that um, Adnan Syed was the one who committed the crime, saying that he killed his girlfriend out of spite of her breaking up with him. So they found the body. They believed that uh, there was also another witness testimony. I'm just trying to find his name, Jay Wilds. He kind of had a strange witness testimony, kind of going back and forth on where exactly he saw Syed. He said he saw Syed, said that Syed murdered, murdered Heyman Lee, and then they buried her body in a Baltimore park. Um, so just still so many questions and very inconclusive. You know, that cell phone data, um, they thought it was reliable, but now they're finding that the cell phone data wasn't reliable. That actually showed that Syed, Syed that he, he was actually near the area where her body was found. Um, but now they're showing these two other, two other alternative suspects that could very well have a connection to where her dead body was found, or they said that they were going to murder Heyman Lee. Mm. Right. It, it's, I mean, it's hard because, so I have some 
well, look, I agree the case seems like it was not handled in the best way. And it might be perfectly valid to say that there isn't actually enough evidence that he did it. I, I agree this witness's testimony was inconsistent, uh, you know, and then ends up making, he may ends up making a very strong claim that he helped bury the body and I think a kind of unpersuasive manner. Uh, I mean, that said, though, we know that, you know, the overwhelmingly murders are committed by someone known to the victim. Um, D domestic violence, ex-boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, husband, <laughs> very, very often the actual perpetrator of a crime. So I'd be very interested to know who these other suspects actually were. If, you know, the theory is it's someone random, some stranger. That, that does happen. We report on that, you know, from time to time. But it is, it is so rare. It would not be the, the most likely thing to have happened, certainly, uh, in this case. So I don't know what we, what we know about who these other, uh, how, how real no. the idea that there were other suspects is. They say that the case is ongoing, so they have not released the names of those two other suspects. And, um, you know, some of them are convicted of other situations. One is, I believe, sexual abuse. So some of these kind of linkings into could they possibly have murdered Heyman Lee? Um, but again, also the DNA evidence on Syed, it is not conclusive. And uh, this is, we know that he's been in prison for 20, I believe it's 23 years. This has completely changed his life. Um, and so there's just still too many questions to say whether he did it or not. And of course, a lot of people watch the Serial podcast. I just spoke with somebody this morning who say, I'm a diehard fan of that. So now you have all these people kind of watching this case and really wondering what really happened and i i think we will find out are those two suspects potentially linked um to Heyman's lee's murder hmm. well you know with the prosecutors have 30 days apparently according to the cnn reporting to decide whether or not to pursue a new trial mm. uh he is out of course with an ankle monitor uh, so he is being tracked as well this is hardly the end of this and we really appreciate you uh coming yeah. to fill us in on these on these updates as as this uh, unfolds over the next few weeks Thank you. Thank you for your time. Stick around. We'll have more Rising for you after this.